Welcome back to the Vet SOS podcast brought to you by the Who You Know Network. Remember, don't drown to see a transition. Grab the Vet SOS Lifeline. Eric, I'm real excited. We, we got a, two great people with us here today that are going to be dropping some serious knowledge that affect the Army and the retirees, the veterans from the Army, in such a great way. We got Colonel Grant with us, and Master Sergeant Wilson. They're going to be just dropping all kinds of knowledge on us today. Dude, I am stoked, man. I'm ready. To, I'm ready to get. I want to. Let's just stop talking. Let's get into this thing. Let's let them do their things. I want everybody to hear them. Yep. Nothing like hyping them up before we ask them a question so they get nervous. <laughs> That's how we roll. Um, <laughs> so, Eric, how are you doing today? You excited for this one? Like you said, man, I'm pumped up, dude. I'm, I've got coffee. I'm excited. I'm ready to rock and roll. Um, like I said, I just want. I want to hear what these two have to offer, man. I, I, so many of us need to hear this stuff. Absolutely. And one thing you probably don't need is coffee, Eric. You, you, you bring the energy every time. <laughs> All right. So without further ado, let's jump right into it here. Colonel David Grant received his commission from the United States Military Academy. Throughout his career, he has held a myriad of leadership positions and numerous assignments related to the Army's recruiting and ascensions mission, including the most recent uh, position as the director of Soldier for Life. Colonel Grant has a bachelor's degree from the United States Military Academy a master's degree from the University of Maryland and the National Defense Unit, master's degrees from the University of Maryland National Defense University and a doctorate in business administration from North Central University. Colonel Grant, how are you doing today? I am doing wonderful. This is such a great opportunity to be here, really fired up to be here and appreciate the opportunity to share information about Soldier for Life and what we're doing for soldiers, veterans and military families across the Army. Absolutely. I can't wait to hear more about this. Sergeant Wilson, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Um, I'm excited to t- talk all about Soldier for Life today. I love it. Now, Colonel Grant, don't get nervous just because you've got three senior NCOs on the line now. <laughs> See, don't now worry. you're making me nervous. Wilson, your back. <laughs> <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, this is a little different from our, our typical guests in the sense that you you, you both are still active. Uh, typically, we, we have people on who are already in the transition space and have retired or, or gotten out of the military at some point. Um, so what's it like being on active duty and, and working this Soldier for Life mission? What's that like for you guys? Oh, gosh, it, it's um, the past 18 months have been an, an amazing experience being the director of Soldier for Life. Um, th- there's no better time than now to be working in this space when it comes to um, supporting soldiers, veterans, and military family members. One of the w- one of the things that I'm really most excited about um, since being in this position is just learning about the, the thousands of organizations across the country that want to support the military community. Um, and, and that's one reason that I, I'll, I'll always say that now is a great time to be part of the army team or the military team because there's so much support throughout the country for individuals who are serving. Uh, that's a <laughs> great point there. Sergeant Wilson, how about you? Is that, I will tell you, it's been amazing because when you, I've been in the military going on 27 and a half years. Ooh. So yes, I've, and I've been here at Soldier for Life for a while, but being able to see all the different uh, issues, circumstances um, coming up in the army to be able to get up here to soldier for life, not really know anything about it and realize all the resources, everything that's available to these soldiers and their families, and then to be able to turn around and and spread that message and and give back. I I love it. So this this is probably my most meaningful position I've been able to hold. Um, I really love what we're doing. I absolutely love that. I love the passion you both have for this mission and, and just the sheer importance of it. Now, Eric, you've been a soldier for life for a couple of years now, right? I have. I, I retired back in 2020. So, so with the airing of this episode, I am officially a soldier for life. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, Congratulations. Uh, leave has yeah. ended, and I am officially a soldier for life. So I'm very excited to have you guys on here for this episode. <laughs> it all ties in very, very well. <laughs> yes. Oh, so let's, uh, let's let's jump into this, Sean. I want to hear. I want I want our listeners to be able to hear. Um, so we understand. So we set the kind of the framework for where Soldier for Life is. Colonel Grant, can you tell us the mission of Soldier for Life? Absolutely. Um, very important mission. Where Soldier for Life, we engage and connect with organizations throughout the country 
in order to ensure that they are connected with the Army in order to better support programs and policies in support of soldiers, veterans, and military family members. In a lot of cases, because of the travels that we do throughout the country, in, in a lot of cases, we're, we may be the only contact that an organization has or a business has um, with the Army, where when we travel, we always come across businesses that want to hire veterans and transitioning soldiers. And one of the most common questions I get from these companies is, how do we gain access to soldiers in order to hire them? And essentially what we'll do is we'll lay out to them the different programs that are out there, whether it's the, the PAYS program, the Partnership for Your Success program, or the Career Skills programs. Um, we, we let them know what it's all about. So essentially when we engage with um, organizations outside of the Army, we're helping them to connect with the Army. But on the same note, inside the Army, we're also spreading a message too because we'll engage and connect with units and soldiers around the Army to make sure that they're aware of the different support opportunities and services that are out there for them. And that is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, with, uh, with, with, with what, 60 some odd thousand service members leaving service every year at the Army. What, what makes Soldier for Life so important to those service members, that, to the Army, that mission? It, it's very important. And, and one thing I do, um, do, do want to clarify for the, the viewers where we have the Soldier for Life um, directorate, and that's, that's the directorate that uh, Mass Sergeant Wilson and I um, represent. And they also have the Army TAP, Army Transition Assistance Program, which used to be known as Soldier for Life TAP. Um, two separate organizations, we work together, we collaborate together where all the soldiers that leave the Army, they go through the um, mandated Army Transition Assistance Program. With Soldier for Life, we're essentially, um, we're, we're essentially engaging and connecting with um, organizations throughout the country. And we're also engaging and connecting with soldiers to make sure that they're aware of all the different op opportunities. Army TAP provides, um, it is, is the required way where soldiers receive information which will help them during their transition, but there's still, gosh, there's still so much information out there um, that, that soldiers and family members aren't um, exposed to. And that's why Soldier for Life, that's, that's one reason why Soldier for Life is important because we help to highlight the programs and initiatives that are out there that help to support the military community. Uh, and, and these programs, soldiers may, might not have been exposed to otherwise. Right. Yeah, that's that's just an amazing mission, and, and that that constant communication flow is so important. Sorry, I, mean, I, I want to ask. I think identifying the 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 difference between the two programs is really important. Yeah, right. It's 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 highlighting the difference because I think that that is a misconception amongst a lot of soldiers is that there's there is a difference between the two missions. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And <laughs> right, right, absolutely. And one of the things that we do when we um when we engage with command courses, um, when we talk to the incoming commanders and first sergeants, or if we engage with um, any installations, we, we that's one thing that we typically highlight is that there is a difference between Army TAP, which was Soldier for Life mm -hmm. TAP, and this office. Yeah, that, that's, because uh, I think when we, we first talked, I was still under the impression that it was SFL TAP. <laughs> when we first had our conversation <laughs> and, and you explained the, the breakdown to me yeah. and, and that's that's something I think we just need to continue to, to get the word out and, and make sure that they understand the separation. Sorry, Wilson, I want to ask you, um, what, through this process, of, you know, being with the program, what have you learned most? How has this impacted you as a senior leader? So I, what I've learned most, and it's, been, it's quite a few things, I will tell you, honestly, um, coming in, being better prepared for transition. But for me, it was the reach back. Um, what did I learn most is how to take care of our soldiers, you know, when we're trying to figure out as they go out. And I've seen many soldiers just saying, OK, I'm getting out. I'm done. And you're talking about specialists that have so much credentials behind them, but saying there's so much more that you can get before you go out. Are you prepared? And coming up here is I've just kind of learned all the resources, all the programs that you need to utilize before you go. It's just learning everything that we have and meeting all 
you know, the individuals that we have and being able to give that back to these soldiers where you've watched them get out. And next thing you know, you're there and it's not a bad thing, but watching them work at Walmart or something that's way below their potential or they weren't ready or they didn't know how to use a resume um, or they didn't receive some of the help that they needed. You know, the, the help as far as we're talking about mentally, physically, and it's seeing that up here and being able to give that message back now to the units that we're talking to, the leaders that we're talking to and saying, this is what we see out in the field. Um, this is what's going on real time. And how do we address it? But actually being able to be in this position and see thousands of resources to say, there's someone out there that can work with you, that can help you, um, that can ensure your transition is goes good you know, you have to put the work in as well, but also to our veterans and their families saying, this is what's out there for you. You may have got out in the height of the war and we get it. You may have got the pat on the back and thank you for your service. Now, you know, we've, we've got to get this other individual ready. Now it's saying, hey, let's step back and let's go back and look at our veterans and say, here, this is what we have here. Once a soldier, always a soldier, soldier for life. And I love that's what Colonel Grant says continuously. Um, so I've just kind of been able to be repetitive in it is he really means it and we really mean it because we're saying these are out there for you um, as a veteran and as a family member now just I've watched it grow for years I've, I've watched this program grow and I've watched it go from our focus was employment um, and we're going on seven years later and just to see everything that we touch and do and then being able to a, as a senior enlisted talk to other individuals other um, senior enlistees I mean junior soldiers and say do you know what's available out there for you? Do you know, you know, and it's, you know, what we constantly do is saying, are you utilizing all your resources? Um, it's being able to have that conversation. And that's what I just, uh, I, I'm going to tell you, I'm very passionate and I love this position. It's given me the ability to give back in multiple ways. I love it. I was reaching for the mouth. Sean. <laughs> I, uh, listen, Sergeant Wilson, I really appreciate that. Um, first, as a veteran, right, knowing that somebody's still reaching out and reaching back to me. Right, but as a father of two active duty service members who are coming up on the end of their first en enlistment, not sure if they're going to stay in, knowing that they've got an organization that they can count on, knowing that they've got senior leaders that are looking at them and making sure that they're prepared as a dad, that just means the world to me. So thank you both for your for your passion. Let me ask you what, and, and Colonel Grant, we'll, we'll pose this to you. Um, what are some of the big goals of Soldier for Life? Oh, we, we have. Um... We have really some amazing goals, and uh, like like Mass Sergeant Wilson had mentioned, employment was the initial um, focus of Soldier for Life when this office started. Um, veteran unemployment was um, was above unemployment levels for non-veteran and was at acceptable levels, and um, that's been the primary focus. And if you look at veteran unemployment now, if you look back for approximately at least the last ten years, um, veteran unemployment has been below unemployment levels for non-veterans. Right now, it's um, approximately at about 2.4, 2.5%. Goals that we have, a couple of, couple of things. And one of the areas um, that really important to me is the health and wellness area, where um, with, with Soldier for Life, um, and I want to make sure want to make sure it's clear to the audience that Soldier for Life, our focus is not only on transitioning is not primarily on transitioning soldiers. It's really on the entire military community, whether you're currently serving, whether you're transitioning, or whether you're a veteran. Um, one of the goals right now that really putting a lot of emphasis into is health and wellness, looking at ways for Soldier for Life to amplify and emphasize the health and wellness initiatives, because there's so many, there's so many things, real, everything's tied to health and wellness. Um, with the, the, there's several organizations that will support the employment and education and with health and wellness, but a lot of times, a lot of times I feel like the focus is on employment. I'm meeting too many of my friends who are veterans, um, too many people that I know who they express that the challenge that they had when they left the army wasn't finding a job. It wasn't going back to school. It was the mental challenge with that change in life, um, whether they served for three years or 23 years, um, it's it's a life change and it, it impacts people differently. So one of the goals that we have is to 
to ensure that Soldier for Life can continue to amplify and highlight organizations that support and um, that, that support and address that challenge and may provide services to make sure that soldiers can have a smooth transition, especially when it comes in the mental health um, arena. Um, veteran homelessness is also an area that we're continuing to emphasize. Um, just last month, I spent uh, a couple of days um, in Massachusetts um, visiting with an organization called Soldier On. And, and the excited thing for me was just learning about what they're doing to help combat veteran homelessness. Um, and, and I'll use one of the quotes that I heard during that visit. Essentially, homelessness knows no zip code. And um, I was especially um, amazed to learn about the different stories when I spoke with these veterans who are living in these homes that were essentially um, 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 built, you know, with this with the primary focus of um, housing veterans. When I spoke with these veterans, it it it, it was it wasn't the stereotypical. It, it wasn't what you think. It wasn't veterans who had drug addiction issues. It, it, it was a combination of issues. Some, yes, had, may have had some drug issues, of, but however, some of them had family bankruptcy issues. Some of, some of the veterans who needed homes um, had businesses that, that, that collapsed due to um, different reasons. Um, some of the veterans were taken advantage of by their, their loved ones. So I really uh, want to ensure that, there, that we combat that misconception that there's a stereotypical type of veteran that is homeless. It can impact um, anyone. So really, goals-wise, one of this emphasizes much those health and wellness initiatives that are out there. Yeah, that's a, a great point. I'm glad you shared that. It's it's not stereotypical anymore, and it can be caused by just about anything. Um, Soldier On sounds like it's an amazing organization doing amazing things. Uh, so... Obviously, Soldier for Life, you automatically think that um, it's all about the soldier, help, helping the soldier. Do you, do you guys do anything with the, the, the spouses, the military spouses, the families, things like that? Yes, yes, um, absolutely. Um, and, and look, I'll, I'll always use the phrase soldiers, veterans, and military families. Um, military spouses, top priority. Um, one initiative that we have... Um, coming up that we're doing in collaboration with um, HRC and um, Recruit Military is a military um, spouse virtual hiring fair, where the focus is primarily on providing opportunities for military spouses. Uh, while I just mentioned how veteran unemployment is about at 2.4, 2.5%, military spouse unemployment is a at times estimated at about 22%. So it's critical that we have, um, that we work to have opportunities for military spouses. Our podcast, Soldier for Life has an array of podcasts on our website. We also have a, an array of what we call Soldier for Life live sessions, essentially um, recorded video sessions. And if, um, if any of the viewers take the time to look through the, the previous um, sessions, they'll see that we've had several sessions that focus on specific initiatives for military spouses. Yeah, that's great. It's such a, I mean, I know Eric and I are both married. It, it, having watched my wife struggle in Korea to try to find a job and we were there for five years, you know, it's it, that, that topic itself has always been near and dear to my heart. So I'm glad to hear that uh, Soldier for Life is doing a little bit in that area as well. Yeah, and, be, and being married to a, another veteran, <laughs> We play the, the veteran and the middle spouse part. So it's, it is, again, I, just, I love the fact that we can sit back and have a conversation that, that highlights that Soldier for Life isn't a one dimensional piece, right? It's multi dimensional. You guys are touching so many great areas and, and areas of need that, that we as veterans need. Um, I, I just, I was, man, I'm just stoked. Um, I'll tell you, can you tell us a little bit about your collaboration with ETS sponsorship? Oh, a absolutely. Um, our, our core lines of effort are, um, and, I'll, and I'll say them again, health and wellness, education, employment, and community outreach. ETS sponsorship, they're a um, nonprofit organization, 501c4. We've been collaborating with them 
um, for numerous reasons. One, they're they're also um, working with the with the VA, which is very important to us. But um, just as importantly, they have essentially implemented a program, uh, a sponsorship program, which is similar to what we're used to in the military, where when we PCS from duty station to duty station, we're assigned a sponsor to help us. ETS sponsorship, they essentially have a program where if you're going to, um, if you're in Texas and you're um, leaving the military, they will help to identify a sponsor in the community that you say that you're going to. So if you're in Texas, but you're, you're coming to Virginia, they will identify a sponsor who's a volunteer. Um, they've gone through training, which was certified by the VA, and they're also prepared to help you transition into that community across an array of areas, across an uh, array of services, whether it's employment, medical, health, health and wellness, to help you navigate the community. Because um, there's sometimes a better uh, transitioning soldier may go to a new community that he may not have ties to, or it might be a community that he, he or she hasn't lived in for several years. So having someone on the ground to support is a um, is a big deal. Um, one of the things that I think is most important about the program, and one of the reasons we continue to work with them, is the fact that um, they help soldiers in a array of areas. So when a soldier signs up for that program, they fill out a survey and they'll indicate whether or not they have challenges in, in any areas, whether it's mental health, whether it's food insecurity or homelessness. And ET, if, if, if a soldier indicates, um, and I say soldier, but it's for all services, um, um, service members from all services um, can um, sign up for it. But if a, if a soldier indicates that he has a problem, the ETS sponsorship team will engage in some cases, they've started a, um, they've provided um, food gift cards um, to HEB, which is a supermarket in Texas, um, for soldiers who have indicated food insecurity um, problems. So that's the thing that's excited about exciting about EPS sponsorship is that they impact an array of areas for which benefit soldiers, veterans, and military families. Okay. Got to drop a bomb on that. That's a huge <laughs> thing. You can get a sponsor throughout the country. That's just amazing. Um, and I should drop another bomb for HEB because that is by hands down the best supermarket I've ever shopped at. I love it. <laughs> it was almost enough to make us move to Texas in retirement. <laughs> so okay. uh, believe it or not, we're already coming down to the end. Um, this this has been a fantastic uh, conversation. Yeah, it went that fast. Wow. Um, it, it, it's it's uh, a... One, Soldier for Life is an amazing program. You got the outreach you guys have now is, is amazing. I didn't even realize how much outreach Soldier for Life was having. Uh, I have seen the posts and things of the different bases and things you've gone to and, and talking to different classes and courses, which is just phenomenal. Uh, so I applaud you you all for, for everything that you guys are doing there. Uh, but as we get ready to, to end, uh, I'll, I'll shoot it to both of you guys. Um, it, it, what do you want to leave the audience with? SR Wilson, would you like to? Uh, you want me to go first? So I just want everyone to know that um, what we say at Soldier for Life is it starts from the moment you sign up to become a soldier um, through being a veteran and a, a military family member that we're always here. Uh, we work hard and we work diligently to ensure uh, everyone has not only a smooth transition, but as a veteran and as a uh, family member that you know the resources that are out there for you. And if you need any help, we just say, reach out, ask the question. Absolutely. So. Wonderful. And I'd like to um, emphasize to communities across the country that may be watching this, um, this um, virtual interview that Soldier for Life, we're all, we're all stationed here in the national capital region in the Washington DC area, but we um, routinely travel throughout the country where, where we look forward to opportunities to come to your community, to share the Army story, to share the Soldier for Life message, to engage with um, you and your audience, to tell you more about what we do and, and how you can connect and um, support the Army um, team in, in, in any area. Um, so, I, and I think that's important that viewers across the country know that 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 we we want to we, we want to be a part of your community 
and also share what we do. So we look forward okay. to um, seeing all of you at some point during our um, travels. I love that. And listen, when you two make it down to Fort Benning, you let me know and dinner's on me. <laughs> oh, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> Uh, I'm moving to a Navy town. I don't think I can help you. <laughs> uh, we'll go there too. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we, we got your information scrolling across the bottom so that people can, can, can follow you on LinkedIn and also reach out to uh, Soldier for Life. Um, Eric, you got any closing comments before we go? You know, I just, I think we've been really kind of hammering this thing down, but I want, I just want our, our, our guests, our audiences to know, our audience to know that recognize that this organization is is something that is, is available for you while you're still wearing a green suit and as you're going through transition it's available for you as a veteran it's available to you as, as a military family member keep in mind that this organization is not one-dimensional it is multifaceted there are a lot of avenues and ways that they can help um i just i, I man i love it i love the fact that you guys are here for all of us we love you guys um if there's anything we can do as vet sos the vet sos team please let us know yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we want to thank both of you for coming on today for, for telling us more about the Soldier for Life mission. Uh, I'm not going to add anything to what Eric just said. That was perfect. Uh, and, and definitely reach out if there's anything we can do to help you. Uh, we want thank to you thank for having us. Yeah. Yes, thank you for having us. I want to thank everybody for tuning in to the Vet SOS podcast. Remember, don't drown the sea of transition. Grab the Vet SOS Lifeline.